Minister Lahsen Haddad from uh, Morocco. Uh, welcome to uh, the to Fitur 2014 uh, to this event sponsored by Casa Arabe and the UNWTO. Um, we'd like to ask you what do you think are the um, the strategies that that uh, what's the strategy behind the good results of uh, of uh, your sector in the past couple of years? Well, one of the key factors and the key causes is the fact that Morocco is a stable country and Morocco has been able uh, to go through what is called the Arab Spring uh, peacefully and make changes and uh, create a process of democratization and constitutional change uh, in a peaceful and consensual manner. So if there is a country that has probably succeeded uh, peacefully and uh, did a silent revolution is Morocco uh, with regard to the demand for change that came with the Arab, uh, Arab Spring. So I think that's what one of the fundamentals. The second one is like Morocco is is quite a stable country and it has always been a stable country uh, politically, socially uh, and economically. Uh, so that also has contributed to the image of Morocco as, uh, as a stable country. Uh, the third thing is that Morocco has been able to devise a whole vision for the tourism and mobilize all the actors in order to be uh, together in order to work and make Morocco uh, a, a, been a great destination for tourism. Uh, we reached like 10 million tourists like the last two years and we are going to reach 20 million in 2020. Um, and I think also the other thing that makes uh, that that has contributed to the big uh, to the great results in Morocco is the fact that we have communicated uh, all throughout the world that Morocco is an exceptional country is uh, is a country that is hospitable is a country with the millennial culture with the kind of uh, geographic diversity diversity of different kinds of offers and we have been able to communicate that throughout the world in traditional markets like Spain and France and others but also in new markets, emergent markets in uh, Eastern Europe, in the Arab world, in Latin America. All of that has uh, given us like this kind of boost in, in terms of tourism and we are happy that we have achieved great results and we will continue to work towards like better results in the future. Mm -hmm. Do you think domestic tourism has, has helped as well in, in balancing the decline in some of the international visitors, at least coming from Europe? And also how about inter-regional tourism? Uh, from other Arab or Muslim countries? Well, we, our domestic tourism has been growing and our aim is to make like 40% of our tourism come from domestic tourism. Uh, so to, domestic tourism now is, is, is a big chunk of uh, our, our business and our revenue and uh, cities like Marrakesh and Agadir are doing greatly on, uh, on, uh, on domestic tourism but also other, other, other destinations as well. So domestic tourism has been growing very well. I don't think it has been making up for because we would like to grow on the international markets, but it's a niche and it's also a very important kind of sector. Uh, we have been also doing greatly and I think we are the first destination now of Arab countries, especially Gulf countries, we would like to continue. There is air connection on a daily basis between Morocco and Saudi Arabia, between Morocco and the Emirates, uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi, and there is also a daily connection with Qatar we are hoping to have a daily connection with Kuwait, so that's a very important market for us. Uh, there are also uh, Egyptian tourists and Algerian tourists and also Turkish tourists that come to us. But also another market which is very important for us, which is interregional, is Western Africa. And we know the influence of Morocco culturally and politically in Western Africa. We have like uh, 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 tens of thousands of West Africans that come through Morocco or come to Morocco, especially with Royal Air Morocco being one of the dominant air companies in Western Africa. So that has given us, give us like uh, an advantage and we are tapping into that advantage in order, in order to have more West African, uh, 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 I mean, like tourists in Morocco. Mm -hmm. So, uh, related to that, do you think there's a need uh, to diversify the products and the services, create maybe more value-added products, or, or you know, I was reading about Sharia-compliant hotels or ecotourism or maritime cruising. Well, I mean, like we. Uh, 
definitely we are diversifying our products so uh, we want we are a dominantly predominantly cultural kind of uh, of destination but within that kind of uh, the constellation we would like to have tourists come to different kinds of cultural products that we are we have in Morocco. So we are diversifying our cultural products so that people can come to Fes in the region and enjoy and have a great experience there. The same thing with the north of Morocco, Tangier and Tetuan, and in addition to Rabat and Casablanca and Marrakesh. But we are also like building our seaside bed capacity because we have 3,500 uh, kilometers from the, the border with Algeria all the way to the border with Mauritania and on the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. We are building like sea resorts, about like 10 sea resorts in order to build capacity and also capture some of the tourists that come from destinations uh, or from markets that like uh, the, 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 the seaside and also the beach kind of of tourism but we are also investing more in in uh, in uh, tour in, in niches like the golfic tourism we have about like 40 golf courses and when it's snowing and cold in Europe then a lot of golfers come to Morocco in order to enjoy the sun but at the same time use those golf courses we are also diversifying the product we are uh, actually encouraging a lot of people to transform the old kind of houses the medieval houses into Riyadh's which gives us like a, a real kind of Moroccan signature there. Uh, of course, there are hotels which do not uh, serve alcohol. That's a choice, and we respect that choice. And probably it caters to a specific kind of sector of the population, and that, that we, we, we don't mind that, and we would like to encourage that as well. So diversity of the product, diversity in terms of geography and destinations within Morocco, and also the diversity of the niches. Sports is very important for us, and business tourism is important, golf tourism is important, ecology and and, and, and nature are important. So we are diversifying the products as we are diversifying the market so that we don't depend on one product, we don't depend on one market. Mm -hmm. Finally, what do you think is uh, the opportunities for employment, especially for the youth? Uh, you know, what are the prospects for job creation in a region where youth unemployment is such a major issue? Well, we, I mean, tourism is a, is a great employer, is, uh, is, uh, is high in terms of employment capacity. We, tourism employs something like 500,000 people now in Morocco. We think that by investing, and we are attracting a lot of investors now, and it's something like 2 billion uh, euros every year that we attract in terms of investment in Morocco, that will create a lot of... Uh, Foreign investment, yeah, and I think that will 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 help us like create more uh, more more employment for the youth. We need to train those youths. We need to work on their capacity. We need to work on their skills. That's why we are improving the capacity of our schools, especially the tourism schools on the public side and on the private side in order to make the, 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 the youth employable, but we are providing with the capacity. We think that we can attract something like 500,000 new employees in the tourism sector by 2020, and we are going to work with all the actors nationally and internationally in order to reach that. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you.